Hello and welcome to ADV Jeep. This is Garrett and I'll be guiding you through an oil change on a DRZ 400E. You're going to need motorcycle oil, DRZ filter, 10 and 12 millimeter crush washers, ratchet, 10, 12, and 14 millimeter sockets and extension, torque wrench, oil drain pan, rag, and gloves. All right, first thing we're going to do is going to put the oil drain pan underneath. Going to loosen the oil fill cap. You'll see the frame plug up towards the front. Mine's blocked by the skid plate underneath, but I can still reach it with an extension. It's going to be a 12 millimeter socket. Now my bike had been sitting in the garage on the off season and I did not run it before draining it. So there's not a whole lot in the frame. Didn't want to have the oil running through its old dirty oil. Wanted to get it out and get some fresh in before starting it up. The crankcase bolt, you'll see right underneath. I got a hole in the skid plate for mine. It's towards the back of the bike. You're going to be using a 14 millimeter socket. Extension makes it a lot easier. When you take it off, make note of the crush washer. Each bolt should have one, both on the crankcase and the frame. You'll see it on there. They're both kind of stuck, but unscrew it or pry it loose. Some people say you can reuse these. I do not recommend reusing a crush washer. When you crush it, it's supposed to take the form and seal it tight. And they're also like 50 cents. So it's definitely worth it to just get some new ones. I stand the bike up just to make sure we get as much as we can out of there. And now for the oil filter, we're going to remove three bolts using a 10 millimeter socket right here on the right hand side of the bike careful not to drop them as I did Now this is where it would have been better had I taken off the skid plate, but I just make sure to clean it as best as I can once I'm all done, wipe everything down. You're going to have two O-rings for the oil filter. You're going to have one on the cap right there, a large one, and you'll have a small one either inside or it may have stuck to your oil filter like it did to mine. Make sure that you keep those if you're going to reuse them. Mine were in good shape. I had just replaced them on my last oil change middle of last year and they were still pretty solid. So no marks, looking for signs of wear or cracks, tears. If you have any of that, you're gonna to wanna to replace them. Don't forget to wipe your filter cap off as well. You got a lot of dirty oil on there. Using an OEM Suzuki oil filter, lots of people recommend lots of different things. Uh, K&N, lots of people run those. Solid filter. I'm sure if you use OEM or one of the name brand filters, you're probably going to be all right.
So I'm using that old O-rings that everything looked good. Still looks brand new. Go ahead and seat that in there before you put the filter in. Make sure you have a little bit of oil on those O-rings if they're the brand new ones, so that, especially this one on the cap, so that when you undo it, just gonna hand tighten these for now. Putting a brand new crush washer on the bolt here. This gonna, one's going to be for the frame. Going to hand tighten this as well. We'll be going back through and torquing everything down before we add the new oil. Same thing for the crankcase bolt. I'm putting a brand new crush washer and finger tighten it for now. Now, Suzuki doesn't recommend a, or they don't provide a torque for the filter cap. It just says tighten securely. I just give steady pressure and make sure that it's tight and nothing's leaking. And once I run the oil through it, check it again just to make sure no oil is coming out of there. As long as it's not leaking, it should be all right. Nothing's loose, no leaks. That's what you're looking for. For the frame, we're going to be doing 13 pound-feet of torque for 156 inch-pound. I have a little inch-pound torque wrench, so I go with the 156. And for the crankcase, we got 15 pound-feet or 180 inch-pounds. Cool, now we're ready to add new oil. I used 20W50. I live in a hot environment, desert climate, and it's an older bike, and it's kind of what the recommendation was. I think the bike calls for 10W40, but 20W50 is what I went with. Depending on who you ask, DRZ community, they'll be saying all different sorts of oils and types and It says a little bit less than two quarts. I leave just about a little bit in the bottle, see how it runs. And after checking it, then uh, I come back, add more if I need to. Like I said, I hadn't started my bike in a while. A little bit of uh, starter fluid just to get it going. It's been about four months. It started right up. After warming the bike up, letting it run, I do at least five minutes, make sure it's uh, oil's hot and coming into the frame because that's where the dipstick is. So you need that oil overflowing into the frame. Don't screw it back in when you're checking. I see a lot of people do that. Per the manual, you are not supposed to screw it back in. Just stick it in. And pull it out and check it. I'm sitting right there at about 95%. Which, on a hot bike, is perfect. Hope this tutorial was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.